Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah bless you all. Let's continue without tafsir then, inshallah. Okay, Al Fatiha. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdina as-salat al-mustaqim. Salat al-lazina an'amta alayhim. Wa ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Salatan tufrihuhu wa tusaiduhu wa turdihi. وَجْزِهِ بِهَا عَنَّا مَا هُوَ أَهْلُهُ يَا أَرْحَمَ الرَّاحِمِينَ اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا وأكرمنا ولا تهنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وآثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا وأرضنا وارض عنا يا كريم So, alhamdulillah, we last looked at <coughs> We looked at Sayyidina Ya'qub alayhi salatu wasalam Where he saw the wisdom and the need to send Binyamin with with the, his other sons however there's a he- hesitation and a resistance within him and simply because of you know their promise many decades earlier that they would look after yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam <coughs> and they didn't and you know look what happened there so he is hesitant so now the scene moves forward uh, maybe it's a few months maybe it's at a point where they feel like, okay right we need we need to leave now if we're going to get there and buy the grain that we need and come back before the current grain finishes so uh, <coughs> he says waqala so the wa the wa indicates that it's a different time now waqala ya waqala ya bunayya sorry waqala ya baniya so plural uh, لا تدخلوا من باب واحد وادخلوا من أبواب متفرقة. He instructed them, "Oh my sons, do not enter the city all through one gate, but through separate gates." وما أغني عنكم من الله من شيء إن الحكم إلا لله. I cannot help you against what Allah has destined, uh, what is destined by Allah in the least. Uh, it is only Allah who decides. وَعَلَيْهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُتَوَكِّلُونَ And in him let the faithful put their trust. Okay, <clears throat> so this verse we can say it talks about, <laughs> it talks about Tawheed. <coughs> so <clears throat> there's one aspect of Tawheed which is knowing that only Allah is the true God. There is no other God besides Him. There is no other divine, perfect being with infinite power, the will that must be enforced besides Him. So that's one aspect of it, and only He deserves worship. But then there's a higher level of Tawheed, which is knowing that Allah is in absulut control. Tabarakalladhi biyadihi al-mulk, in, you know, blessed and perfect, is the one in whose hand alone is the dominion. So this being controls absolutely everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, what this entails is for a believer to know that if Allah is in control of everything, I can, you know, I can act in accordance with the Sunnah, you know, and what we're being taught here, take the means, but I should be able to let go of the outcome and leave it to what Allah decides, and it's going to be good for me. Right? We've seen this in many verses that Allah does and decrees for his believing servants what's best for them. So knowing this and okay, it'll be good for me so I can uh, put my trust in Allah. Sometimes a person can know the reality of this, but it doesn't affect, they can believe it, Allah is in control of everything, but they don't allow it to affect their decision-making process, their choices, because they feel I have to control everything. And no, Allah is teaching us this, that no, He is in control. So Sayyidina Ya'qub alayhi salatu wasalam saw this, he knew this, right? <coughs> so he said, Ya Baniya, my, my sons, my dear sons, لا تدخلوا من باب واحد ودخلوا من أبواب متفرقة don't enter from one gate, enter from multiple gates. So they're going to the city of Memphis and you know they've been there before. They were honored by Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Eleven handsome adult men, it's a strong group, they're looking well, and you know, they got special treatment before. So the, the ulama have given like different reasoning. So one of them it would could be the the ayn, the evil eye, which is true. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, said that the evil eye, you know, 
<coughs> it can have an effect someone's you know the um, uh, you know the soul of someone when it's directed in a negative way towards something it can have an effect so either to prevent that or just malice would be the reason as ibn ashur you know uh, you can understand that from what he says that you know if someone people just have malice the jealousy look at these people they were honored why aren't we honored like this so what <coughs> what Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam wanted was for them to go into the city in smaller groups and obviously to look after you know the youngest brother to go in in smaller groups so th- it doesn't raise anyone's ire uh, you know and so no one seems to think you know they're getting special treatment or any other uh, wrong assumptions they just want to go there to buy grain for their family that's why they're there so he told him he told them to uh, to do this what is he doing he's <coughs> he's taking the means like we know the the narration about a man who went to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asking about should he tie his camel or put his trust in allah and he was told you know to tie his camel and put his trust in allah so we see from that that taking active taking active reasonable means is part of tawakkul you can't like someone who doesn't prepare for an exam doesn't read any of the material that they need to know and just i put my trust in allah no you haven't put your trust in allah right <coughs> you take the means as though the means are all <laughs> uh, all that matter and uh, you know and then you when the means have been taken care of you put your trust in allah knowing that in reality it's allah that's the only thing that matters right and the means were just uh you know because it's a sunnah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala idha arada allah amran hayya lahu asbaba in the one narration when allah wants the matter he prepares or he facilitates its means the means to that matter so this is the important thing here <coughs> and so sayyidina yaqub saw this so he told them do this act in this particular way <coughs> and then he says wama ughni ankum min allahi min shay and i can't uh, i i can't i cannot help you against what is destined by allah right so ughni from ghina or ghana so the word the root word means um, to not have need right so someone who's wealthy ghani has money to take care of any need he has so those needs aren't there basically so he says i can't do anything if allah wants otherwise i can't do so him he's saying this like him being a prophet and you know that it's a different matter like the intercession that the prophets are given on the day of judgment that's one thing but here in the dunya as the world uh, continues and as allah's decree and destiny unfolds um it's going to happen because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge and so like he destined that yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam would be separated from yaqub for you know you know all those years and <clears throat> so he says that i can't do anything him being a prophet and being someone with so beloved to allah and with all the special knowledge from god ultimately what allah wills will happen so <coughs> he's saying that despite who he is and his tremendous rank allah's will is paramount and what allah decides that's what happens in al hukmu illa lillah so there's a, <coughs> a double negative and what this does you know the effect that is having it's it's changing their perspective like if they were uh, if they had this understanding well maybe you know if our father insists and allah will make things happen the way he wants no he says no in al hukmu illa lillah so double negative and <coughs> so it becomes a very strong affirmation that the the command all commands the matter the way reality unfolds where life goes all of that is belongs to god to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone alayhi <coughs> tawakkaltu in him in him i'm putting my trust so this alayhi i mean it could have been in tawakkaltu alayhi the same in 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 english you can say i put my trust in him but in him i put my trust it restricts the meaning only to him so sayna yaqub knows that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in complete control of everything and this is the this is the due of iman this is what iman this is what a person who has iman must 
do. It's what owed by them, what's owed to them that you put your trust in Allah. When things are difficult, things are rough, things are not clear, things are just uh, continuing without you knowing how's it going to end, you say, Oh Allah, whatever you want, I put my trust in you. That's that's how it works. And there's you know countless benefits of it. One of the benefits is Allah loves those who put their trust in Him. And it's, it's, it's an honor if you have a situation like that in life. Allah's honoring you. So do your best to try and put your trust in Him. And you can become beloved to Allah. <coughs> Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then He says, وَعَلَيْهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُتَوَكِّلُونَ Then He's saying, so it's a tawakkal to alay. It's like you've taken uh, also the root word. From wakala indicates that you choose. You're, you're choosing Allah. Oh Allah. I choose you to take care of this matter. So you've taken all of your worries and your concerns and then you've given them to Allah, right? And, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's, it's really quite a beautiful concept. And uh, as I said, it's the highest, uh, a very high manifestation of a person's understanding of Tawheed, that Allah's in control. So he says, so in him, let anyone who is going to put their trust in something, put their trust. So he didn't say وَعَلَيْهِ هِيَ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Let the believers, that is there in other verses. But here now he knows that you know, their sons are, his sons are going to go. They're going to be in, in a situation where they will need to put their trust uh, in Allah. So don't trust your uh, cunning and don't, tr don't trust your knowledge and don't trust your experience and don't trust. No, put your trust in Allah. Don't think these other things are what, what, what's going to guarantee success. And so he just wants to avert harm from his children. But in reality, Allah had something planned and it happened. And, you know, <coughs> Sayyidina Ya'qub knew that if Allah plans something, it, no one can stop it. وَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا مِنْ حَيْثُ أَمَرَهُمْ أَبُوهُمْ مَا كَانَ يُغْنِي عَنْهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا حَاجَةً فِي نَفْسِ يَعْقُوبَ قَضَاهَا So then when they entered, as their father instructed them, this did not help them against the will of Allah whatsoever because he had a plan. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, his qada, his, his decree. Um, <clears throat> it, it, was, uh, it was just a desire in Jacob's heart which he satisfied. right? And وَإِنَّهُ لَذُو عِلْمٍ لِمَا عَلَّمْنَاهُ وَلَكِنْ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And he is, he was truly blessed, blessed with great knowledge because of what we had taught him. But most people do not know that. Most people have no knowledge of that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us <coughs> what happened. وَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا مِنْ حَيْثُ أَمَرَهُمْ أَبُوهُمْ So they did listen to their father. Everything he told them to do, they listened to it. They went and they separated into groups and they went into the city in that city, in the way he told them. Great. But that didn't change anything that Allah had planned. And so he's saying that when they entered the city, they took the means. But this doesn't change anything. مَا كَانَ يُغْنِي عَنْهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ It doesn't, this didn't change anything. Anything, this didn't avert anything that Allah had planned. What Allah wanted, their, their steps didn't do anything to prevent it or to avert it. So rather it just shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in active control, active control of every single thing. right? And so why did Sayyidina Yaqub tell them to do that? He said, illa uh, hajatan, that it was, it, it, it was just... Uh, a need Sayyidina Ya'qub uh, felt inside that he, he you know, fi nafsi Ya'qub that he uh, took care of. Qadaha, meaning he took, he felt that what if something like this happens and what if, uh, they say, Al-Hadr la yughni min al-Qadr. Um, preparation and, you know, being alert doesn't, doesn't avert decree, right? So Sayyidina Ya'qub thought that if it is something that can be averted through taking steps, <coughs> then they should do it. So he told them how to avoid that. Um, it's significant that Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, <coughs> he was um, with Abu Ubaidah, Amir ibn al-Jarrah radiallahu anhu, uh, after the passing of the Prophet, during the Khilafah of Sayyidina Umar, and uh, a plague 
you know, uh, broke out in uh, in the Levant. So Sayyidina Umar was supposed to go to a city, but they got news that there's um, you know that there's an outbreak there. So he didn't, and he decided to turn away and go elsewhere. <coughs> and <coughs> Abu Ubaidah said, "A firaran min qadrillah," and uh, so he said, "Are you fleeing from the decree of Allah?" So Sayyidina Abu, Abu Ubaidah had an understanding and Sayyidina Umar had an understanding and Umar's understanding was far greater, deeper. So Abu Ubaidah said, look, if it's decreed, um, then how can you flee? How can you turn away from it? Like if something's meant to happen, then how are you, you know, leaving it won't change anything. But Umar said, first he said to him, had it been anyone else, <laughs> meaning they would have got discipline, <coughs> because <coughs> you know he's the ruler, he's the leader, and you know clearly he has an understanding that that makes him fit to be in that role. And he said, "Nafiru uh, min qadrillah ila qadrillah." We're fleeing from the decree of Allah. Like if you go in there, let's say someone's likely to get exposed and you know become ill. So we're fleeing from that. But where are we going? We're not going to something else. We're going to what Allah has decreed. So Allah's control is on everything. And sometimes a person does actively take some steps, right? Like Sayyidina Yaqub told them to do here. So you take the steps. This is like tying your camel. So he's avoiding that. But then where do you end up? You end up in a situation that's also en encompassed by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's a much deeper understanding here. <clears throat> so this is what he's saying. That. <coughs> he took the steps. وَإِنَّهُ لَذُوْ عِلْمٍ High praise, high, high praise for Sayyidina Yaqub. And he is someone of vast, vast knowledge. ذُوْ عِلْمٍ here. This ذُوْ indicates that the, the knowledge has been there for a long time and it's a vast amount, right? Why he has vast knowledge? Because of what, you know, because of us teaching him. Allah the royal we so Allah taught him Allah taught him a huge amount with knowledge and wisdom and many things but walakin akthar an-nas walakinna sorry walakinna akthar an-nas la ya'lamun but you know most people don't know right <clears throat> do most people don't know this right that um that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him deep understanding of all these matters. So this is why Sayyidina Yaqub took the means, but he also put his trust in uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But most people are just ignorant of, you know, these realities. And they just think, well, I, I will take this step and uh, I'll be, you know, we have a guaranteed success. No, what's guaranteed is, is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. And someone who doesn't understand that, then, you know, there are these people who just don't know. They don't know how the world works. They don't know how things really are. Yeah. Most people don't know about the reality of the Qadr. You know, you can't... <clears throat> something that's... What hits was never going to miss and what misses was never going to hit. Yes, you can take the steps and you should take the steps. And there are s steps that can prevent something. You know, sometimes a matter is mu'allaq, uh, as they say, suspended. Like, you know, something is meant to happen, but um, you make a dua. And because of that dua, Allah turns it aside. So there are things like that. So it's, it's a deep and complex uh, understanding. Uh, but there's a lot of wisdom behind it. And, you, you know, it teaches a believer a lot about how to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a slave. So then, <coughs> the next verse says, وَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَىٰ يُوسُفَ آوَىٰ إِلَيْهِ أَخَاهُ قَالَ إِنِّي أَنَا أَخُوكَ فَلَا تَبْدَئِسْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ When they entered Joseph's presence, he called his brother Benjamin aside and confided to him, I am indeed your brother Joseph, so do not feel distressed about what they have been doing. So, they got in, they got into the city, they were able to see um, Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. So he said, وَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَىٰ Yusuf." When they entered uh, the presence of Yusuf, uh, he took his brother to his side. Iwa is where you go to a place of comfort, like where you go at night to rest. So, awa ilayhi akhahu. So Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam brought his brother in close to speak to him. 
and this comforted his brother. So what will have happened? <coughs> like a likely scenario, he'll have organized a feast for them, fed them all, giving them separate, uh, you know, sleeping quarters or something like that. Or, you know, and there's 11 of them, so it's easy to, easy to put them in twos, uh, and then there's one left. <coughs> so he might <coughs> he might have sat uh, with Benjamin and or spoken to him outside of earshot, and <coughs> you know, and then he reveals himself. Right? قال إنني أنا يوسف. Very strong way. Nominal sentence with inna and then the the second noon إنني and then أنا Yusuf and so it's like almost like his youngest brother who just almost couldn't believe it, but then he convinced him and showed him, look, it's me, <coughs> and you know. And <clears throat> so he'll have asked him then, how's life been? How's my father? You know, how's the rest of the family? How have they been to you? Uh, because he knew, like, they were, <clears throat> they didn't like Yusuf, but because of that, they also projected that dislike onto Benjamin. So he will have asked him, and his brother will have expressed what they did. And, you know, like, clearly it wasn't, uh, you know, they didn't have a nice, congenial, you know, happy relationship in all those years. So he said to him, you know, like, Fala is don't feel sad about what they've been doing again and again, repeatedly over the years. Don't feel sad now. <coughs> Meaning he must have told him, look, I've got a plan, we're going to unite. But first we need to, you know, they're going to learn a lesson. That Allah's going to teach them a lesson. And uh, so don't be sad anymore because all they've done is past now. Right, and you don't need to continue to be sad about this matter. It, things are going to change for the better very soon. So this is how it played out. And uh, as we said, uh, we'll see later that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala had all of this planned for them. So we'll continue from this point, Insha'Allah Taala, and we we'll look at how Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala made this uh, occur in a way that uh, showed the, you know how much Yus Yusuf has been honoured. And in a way that taught you know his brothers the lesson they needed to learn. Okay, Allah bless you all, and we'll continue insha'Allah. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.